Finding the right supplements for a program to improve bone health is tough. There is so much misinformation around supplements, partially because there's big money in supplements. I do my best to hit on as many big levers as possible for bone health, and I don't own a supplement company, so I can talk about whatever products I like, openly and honestly. I have nothing to sell you here. Today, I wanna to talk about one of the hidden gems of bone health. Not a lot of people are talking about it. Today, we're gonna to talk about boron. This is a wonder supplement, and I'm gonna tell you why. But before I tell you why, if you have a story to tell us about boron, let me know if you've used it and you have a story, I wanna see it in the comments on YouTube. Three, two, one. So there's kind of a dangerous trend that I've seen with boron and with some other supplements that people are doing right now. And I'm going to cover that in a few minutes as well. But before I do, let's look at some boring boron basics. Sorry, I couldn't help that alliteration. Boron is a unique element because it doesn't really fit into the category of vitamin or mineral. Boron can be considered an essential mineral, but really it's an essential element. Essential meaning that we need to consume it and that our body doesn't make it. But boron is a little controversial because the mechanism behind its potential benefit, particularly for bone, is not well understood. As an evidence-backed researcher, I'm always looking for clear mechanisms and research to support my hypothesis that that particular intervention will improve bone. My team was actually able to uncover a lot of potential mechanisms, which I'm going to share with you. We're still missing the final step in this process, which is the compelling clinical trials looking at boron as an intervention for humans and reversing osteoporosis. But there are some really great studies that you have probably never seen, and I wanna share this with you. So let's explore this in a bit of detail so we can determine how much, how often, and should this be a product that you should talk to your team about adding to your own supplement stack. All right, let's talk about this first study. So cell studies are a really good way to start, especially when you're looking for a hypothesis. There's a 2016 study that was a, a real-time PCR analysis that revealed that messenger RNA, uh, which is mRNA, which is, we're talking gene level, which I know can be confusing, but basically mRNA expression of four mineralization-related genes is clearly increased after three days of exposure to boron. So what the heck does that mean? But what that means is that boron has an impact on the, on the not only the cellular level, but the genetic level where genes are expressed in the presence of boron. And specifically, some of those genes we're looking at specifically the acceleration of calcium flux. Uh, so now we're talking about a specific element that we know is related to bone health. So kind of a cool starting point, right? So now we can say, well, boron seems to be doing something genetically that's going to do something with calcium. But how does that actually pan out? Well, so some human studies had already been done. So there's a 2011 human study, although not on osteoporosis and not on our patient population, but still humans, although only eight of them, and they were men. Um, but the study was trying to look at boron supplementation and could it have any effect on steroid hormones, inflammatory biomarkers, et cetera. So they consumed 10 milligrams, which is kind of a lot, of boron with their breakfast, and they were looking for um, any impact on specifically sex hormone binding globulin, which you may have heard me talk about, or SHBG, which can play a role in our hormone levels, CRP, which is a biomarker for inflammation, TNF-alpha, which is a biomarker for inflammation, and then also uh, levels of free testosterone, uh, which is great. I'm glad they were measuring free testosterone. They also looked at estradiol um, and then dihydrotestosterone, which is a byproduct of testosterone, cortisol, stress marker, vitamin D, uh, et cetera. So what they found is that um, SHBG, CRP, and TNF-alpha all went down. Now, what that means is that your binding globulin for hormone goes down, potentially your hormones will go up. More on that in a second. CRP and TNF-alpha going down is a sign that inflammation went down. And that's really important and that's really cool. What they then showed from a sex hormone level is that free testosterone did increase as we would anticipate from SHBG going down. So estradiol went down, free testosterone went up. And so you could argue that could actually work both ways from a bone perspective. So we would have to see what, what pans out in the literature. Um, other things that went up is the DHT, uh, vitamin D and cortisol. So interesting. 
cortisol going up could be a little bit concerning. And now we have to ask ourselves, well, if inflammation went down and cortisol went up, like what's the most important thing? Um, I think the big takeaway here is that all three of the inflammatory biomarkers went down. So that's probably a net positive. Free testosterone went up, probably net positive, but potentially we don't want the estradiol to go down. So interesting. I think overall the impact on the hormones is likely going to be an androgen positive or testosterone positive move, uh, potentially reducing estradiol, but estradiol has other levers too. So this is potentially just provoking the androgen pathway, which could be a good thing for bone for sure. All right. Now this next study is a 2010, again, we're going back to cells, but a 2010 cell study looking at boron on cell survival, proliferation, which is making more cells, mineralization, and then also back to mRNA expression. So this is what's happening from the genetic level, um, but specifically for mineralized tissue associated proteins. So now we're going back and looking at some proteins that are specifically associated with mineralization of bone. And the results of the study suggest that at the molecular level, at the genetic level, boron continues to display important roles on bone metabolism. And uh, the authors suggested that we may find a novel use of uh, uh, boron in regenerative medicine, which is kind of an interesting statement. All right, so we also found this older study from 1987, and this was a study on women. So now we're getting closer to our population of interest. So these were 12 women that were looked at with a, a couple of different elements. So it was boron, magnesium, and aluminum. And uh, they used the three milligram a day supplementation of boron, which is a little closer to what I would feel comfortable with. And they looked at lots of different things uh, with mineral, mineral metabolism. And what they found essentially is that taking boron increased levels of estrogen and increased levels of testosterone. So remember the previous study, I said, oh, well, it decreased estrogen and maybe that's a bad thing. But this is a study on women. So we have different balances of hormones. And in women, in this study, that estradiol went up in all of the women as well as testosterone. That's particularly interesting for women that are struggling with hormone optimization because they were also looking at magnesium. For those that were low in magnesium, the impact was even greater. So boron could potentially make up a little bit for some of that magnesium deficiency. So now I want to show you some bigger studies. And that really opened the door, I think, to some people making some mistakes with boron. So we'll get to that. But before we do, if you're having a hard time putting together all the different recommendations, even that I make on this channel, because we have you know, over 100 videos now on bone health, and trying to put all those things together can be really challenging. So if you are struggling to put that together and you want to consider uh, coming to our free masterclass where we can help you to show you how we put it together and then you can decide what's right for you based off of that, um, that masterclass is totally free. Link in the description on YouTube. And if you're on a, a podcast, if you're listening to this, just head over to OptimalHumanHealth.com and you can learn more about that. All right, so now we start getting into some bigger studies. So we're going to look at this 2020 study, um, and this is a meta-analysis of 11 different studies that had a total uh, number of 594 individuals. And their goal was to look at the effectiveness of boron supplementation on growth and maintenance of bones in humans through the control of calcium and vitamin D. Oh, man, well, this sounds like something I really want to know. What the studies show is that really there is a positive effect of boron on bone, now, the studies all looked at different things, but what they, they took out of this is that through the control of calcium, vitamin D, and sex hormones, that uh, you can positively manipulate bone metabolism, and the recommendation here is at three milligrams a day of boron. So the last study I want to talk about, the sixth study, is from 2015, and they were looking again specifically at boron for bone growth and maintenance, but they showed all these other interesting things. So I just want to wrap this all together for you. So uh, they showed that boron greatly improves wound healing. It's beneficial for the body's use of estrogen and testosterone, beneficial for vitamin D levels naturally. It boosts magnesium absorption. So there's that magnesium thing again. It reduces inflammation through CRP and TNF-alpha. It improves antioxidant uh, enzymes such as uh, SOD, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase. Uh, it can protect against some of the oxidizing uh, components of pesticides and heavy metals. So there's a, a detox effect there. It can also impact cognitive performance and short-term memory. So in this study, they show that boron can do a ton of things. And they basically conclude by saying supplementation of three milligrams per day for any individual who is missing it in diet. And we'll talk about that in a second. But any individual who's missing it in diet, they should consider to supplement three milligrams per day. They also talk about the fact that there doesn't really appear to be any downside. And I have just a little bit of an issue with that because 
I, <laughs> I see people that will latch on to something like boron and they'll say, well, you know, if a little bit is good, more is better. And they'll just go nuts on it. And so they'll say, well, if three milligrams is good, then 30 milligrams is better. This is that concerning thing that I was talking about. Toxicity has been reported and it can cause some GI issues like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain can cause weird like skin issues like rashes. Um, if you've been in direct contact with high concentrations of it, it can cause other skin problems, it can give you headaches, fatigue, kidney damage, reproductive issues. But that's all at levels that are over what uh, the World Health Organization puts 20 milligrams a day as the safety threshold. Um, you know, three milligrams is nowhere near that. Um, and it is possible to get this through food, um, but you're not going to get anywhere near 20 milligrams uh, through food. So toxicity is more likely an environmental exposure. So not even through supplementation, although clearly you could, you know, take 15 of them and you would hit that mark. So the question is, is do I add boron to my patient supplement stack? And the answer is not individually because it's already in AlgaCal Plus at three milligrams. So we're already providing that three milligram dose of boron through AlgaCal Plus and D3 Complete, those two products that we're using together. I think it's important to know why you're taking a supplement. So when you look at products like AlgaCal Plus, the, um, you know, the, sup the list is pretty big of all the things that are in it. I think it's important that you understand why those things are in it and if they're the right thing for you. So no matter what product you're taking, understanding, oh, now here's this big list. Are they the right form? Is it the right amount? Should I be taking all these things at the same time? So it's, it's really hard to understand that. And I applaud all of you who are listening to this video, trying to understand all this information because it is uh, very complex and putting it together on your own is really, really challenging. So uh, if you wanna get the most out of this boron video, if you haven't already watched the video that I made on AlgaCal Plus, that one's called the best calcium supplement for osteoporosis. So I would check that one out. Um, and then I also have the best supplement for osteoporosis. And that one specifically on muscle and bone development uh, during perimenopause and menopause. And that one um, uh, is specifically about essential amino acids and branch chain amino acids. So that's it. Remember that osteoporosis isn't the end but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. If you have already gone through our Bone Health Masterclass and you're looking for additional information, consider our Bone Foundations course. You can look in the description below on YouTube and you can find that link or you can go to optimalhumanhealth.com and you can find the Bone Foundations course there. Uh, again, totally free, 16 or more modules, I think at this point. Uh, they'll walk you through how to build a program to improve bone health. Um, also gives you some other free things like uh, a free ebook for the book that I wrote on osteoporosis. It gives you access for a month for free to our HealthSpan Nation where individuals are asking us questions, uh, myself and my team members on a weekly basis and uh, has a community to help support each other. So also a really cool thing. So if you're interested in that, check it out with the link or on optimalhumanhealth.com and I will see you next time. This presentation is for general informational purposes only, does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this presentation are at the user's own risk. The content in this presentation is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.